Hi YouTube, this is Jeff at Darkwood Metals. Today I want to expand my video library with talking about something that's serious if you're planning on getting involved into any type of electric arc welding. And that is your personal safety. There are large box stores that are starting to carry different types of welding equipment. One of the most common are portable MIG welding systems. Um, they're designed to be used with a flux core wire. You don't even need a gas cylinder uh, to operate them. Uh, you have to be aware of some of the safety issues that arise when you're doing any type of welding. And this video is primarily going to be for the beginner to explain what to expect while you're welding and why you need different types of safety apparatus. So let's jump right in and talk about my jacket. Now this is a four ounce leather welding jacket. For home use, for the hobbyist, you really don't need something this serious. Um, I wore this in school all the time. I was doing overhead welding with a shower of sparks coming down on me, but this is pretty much the industry standard if you're going to be working in any kind of a shop. Um, what you really need to keep yourself safe is a garment that does not easily catch fire, and if, God forbid, it should catch fire, it is a garment that does not melt. Now, this was my school uniform. This is made out of a 100% cotton fiber, and the reason for that is, is that cotton will smolder and it will burn, but it will not melt. I had a classmate uh, in my class, and unfortunately, his, fly, his uh, shirt did catch fire, and he was wearing one of those really colorful band t-shirts underneath it that had a nylon fiber intertwined with the cotton, and it melted to his chest, which uh, I can say, even not having gone through it, could not have been a pleasant experience. Um, being burned is one thing. Having to peel plastic out of your skin at the hospital is something completely different. So you want a natural fiber shirt, preferably 100% cotton. Cotton breathes. You also want a color that's fairly dark. Um, the reason for that is you are welding with an extremely bright light, and you don't want to reflect it everywhere. Um, having a white shirt on, for example, if you have your welding helmet down, the light is going to be reflecting off of that shirt, and it's going to, some, to some level, it will come up into the helmet, and you'll get all kinds of glare inside of your helmet, and it makes it harder to see what you're doing. Um, you also want to make sure that you're wearing a long sleeve shirt. Welding light is UV light. It's the same light that comes from the sun that causes things like sunburn and melanoma. Every area of exposed skin should be covered while you're doing any type of electric arc welding process. Okay, here's another option. This is a leather apron, and although you cannot see it, it goes down past my knees. Now, in conjunction with your long sleeve cotton shirt, this will offer you a level of protection that is a lot better than just the shirt by itself. Um, it's made out of the same material as the welding jacket. It's really lightweight. It allows me to breathe. Um, it allows me to sweat and perspire, and I can stay relatively comfortable throughout the day. One nice thing about this type of welding apron, usually they're really cheap. I picked this one up for about $7. And because it does go past my knee, if I'm welding something like a trailer or a muffler back onto a lawnmower and I'm sitting down on a milk crate or something, it protects my legs from sparks too. Because if you're sitting down, the sparks have a tendency to collect between your waist and your knees. And if you're only wearing denim jeans, you'll get holes in them, uh, you might get burned. So this is just one of those things that you can do to protect yourself, and it's really not that expensive at all. Um, now, welding gloves. There are two types of welding gloves that I primarily use. Uh, these thicker gloves, these are used for stick welding and MIG welding primarily. You can use them with oxyacetylene welding, but the heat from the torch has a tendency to dry out the leather, and it gets really, really hard, and that really happens to any type of leather glove. Um, so if you want to use a heavy glove for oxyacetylene stuff, I'd recommend going out and just buying a really crappy pair. Don't spend a lot of money on them, because um, you will basically destroy the fingers and they'll become very difficult to move. Um, this glove right here is unlined. It is um, your basic run-of-the-mill welding glove, and I picked this up. I think this pair was maybe, maybe $10. But you can go out and buy welding gauntlets that have uh, reflective coatings on them if you're, you know, if you're having a problem with heat. Uh, but you're going to pay for it. Uh, you can spend anywhere from, like I said, seven or eight bucks, all the way up to sixty, seventy dollars a pair for really good welding gloves. The other pair of gloves that I have here, these are TIG welding gloves. Now they offer the same protection as far as how far it goes up your wrist, 
But the leather at the end of the glove is a lot more malleable. It's a lot softer. And it allows you to do intricate things. When you're TIG welding, you're actually using your TIG torch in conjunction with a welding rod. And being able to have, you know, a fully articulate hand comes in handy when you're feeding your rod in. And depending on what you're welding, you may find yourself switching hands. TIG welders are more often than not trained in how to TIG weld with both hands, so you'll be feeding wire with one hand or the other, depending on what you're welding and the position you're gonna be welding in. Okay, we talked about protecting your skin, we talked about protecting your extremities, now we're gonna talk about protecting your eyesight. Um, it's something that you really want to take seriously and you really want to buy the proper safety equipment for your eyes. Um, I've seen people on YouTube that weld in things like this. These are welding glasses, but they're meant for gas welding, oxypropane, oxyacetylene, things of that nature. These have maybe 50% of the lighting, uh, the light blocking capabilities that you really need for electric arc welding. Plus, I've said it before, you really want to make sure you have all of your exposed skin covered in some way because of the UV light. If you are only wearing these, you're not coming even close to covering the portions of your face that are left vulnerable to that particular uh, radiation. This is the welding helmet that I primarily use. I picked it up at a big box store. I got it for $100. If $100 is not in your price range, you can get one that's not auto darkening and you can pick them up for as little as 40 bucks. Um, they even make ones that, it's like a welding helmet on a stick and you just hold it up to your face while you're welding. Um, those are extremely inexpensive. And you want to make sure, average lens is about a shade 10 lens. This one right here will let me go as low as 9 and as high as 13 depending on the level of welding that I'm doing. And when it comes to protecting your vision, really it's not a lot of money. So get yourself a decent helmet and you can enjoy this craft for years to come and you won't be in a position where you can't see what you're doing and trying to weld by braille. All right, very quickly, since we're on the topic of your head, ear protection. You want to protect your hearing. Now, while you're doing TIG welding, stick welding, MIG welding, things of that nature, it's not an exactly, it's not a loud process. If you're plasma cutting and you have a compressor running, especially in the winter time if you've got your garage door closed, it does echo and you do want to think about your ears. Um, I wouldn't recommend these over a welding helmet, they're kind of cumbersome, but they do make the kind that fit in your inner ear, they hand them out if you go to a loud concert, things like that. I use these if I'm doing a lot of grinding work and I have the grinder right here, my head's right here. You know, it's worth protecting your hearing. I know a couple of guys that have tinnitus and they tell me it's not a lot of fun. So, another piece of advice. As I wrap up this video, last thing I want to cover is good footwear. Uh, bottom line, you've got to have yourself a good pair of boots. Some people weld in sneakers, it's not really a great idea. Uh, you want a boot that has about a quarter of an inch worth of leather on it. If, you're, uh, if you happen to step on something that you just torch cut or plasma cut, you want it burning the sole of the boot, not the sole of your foot. You want all leather. You don't want any kind of canvas or nylon sides, uh, like some of the hiking boots have, the lightweight boots. You want a good, heavy work boot. Um, the reason for that is that panel, that nylon canvas, it can catch fire and it can be rather hazardous. I had a welding instructor at my school set his foot on fire because he was wearing a pair of hiking boots and not good work boots. Needless to say, that particular week, the school started emphasizing a lot of uh, shop safety. You want a high top boot that's big enough to where your pant leg will come down over the top of it. As the sparks shower down, you want them to basically shed off of you. Um, if your boot tops are exposed and the sparks can get in there, it can ignite your sock and can basically cause you to have a really bad day. Well, that's pretty much the safety video. And I believe that right now, uh, after this, you have a basic idea of what you need if you want to start arc welding. And I hope you do. I hope you go out and uh, experiment with it and have some fun with it. It's a very rewarding work. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who are retiring out of this field. And welders are going to start being hard to find. So uh, you may even get yourself a pretty decent career out of it if you get good enough. Well, until next time, this is Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I want to thank you for, uh, for watching my videos. And please comment, post video responses. I look forward to seeing them. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.